Well, it's morning on day two, and uh, I just filled up gas in my tank. I am currently in Syracuse, Kansas. Last night I slept at the uh, Syracuse Sand Dunes Park. Uh, very sandy there. Also lots of flies and gnats. But it was very quiet. I think that was the only person in my section of the uh, campground. And uh, it was Continue fine. Continue on US 50 West for 43 miles. That's my navigation. So far, I am 554 miles from home. A long way. That's the one thing that I think is making it difficult to sleep the last two nights. Is thinking about how far away from home I am and how long it's going to take me to get back. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I can't dwell on it too much. I have to forge ahead and stay the course here and uh, head onward. I am now going to just head west into Colorado. Today I have two national parks on the docket. And hopefully I won't have any issues getting to either of them. driving in Colorado, got a little bit past Granada, and saw a sign off the uh, road here for a Japanese internment camp. This is Amachi, which I guess operated from 1942 to 1945. There's not really much here. It's mostly just a commemorative site. Uh, there's a couple of placards and things. Kind of like Washita, it's another, another stain in our in our country's existence. I hope this trip becomes less depressing. Vince Fort. There's the fort down there. I came here once when I was very young. Perhaps when I was maybe 14 years old. So I, I have a very vague memory of it. But it's on the way and I figured I'd stop. So let's go check out Vince Old Fort. Looks like we have a guard kitty They're guarding the entrance here. Hi. All right. So um, the main purpose, of course, is to trade in those buffalo robes. So every spring, a wagon train full of all the robes that we've taken in trade goes back to Missouri to sell them or trade them at a profit once a year. So the more we can fit in a wagon, the more money we're going to make. That's what this device here is for. This is a buffalo rope press. You just turn it around, you squash down the ropes and the tight bail. The buffalo rope normally, as we'll see in these rooms, you have ball feet and don't fold up the pad normally. So that's what this device is for. You can see what's important to the Ford, what's center square. You can see what's broad. So there you go. It goes down slowly, but it does. So how much did one of these bales of buffalo hides weigh? Um, I don't have that figure offhand. You, when we get in there, they're heavy. Ah. They're very heavy. So how many, how many would they put on a, on a cart or a wagon or whatever? Well, it would depend. But, but yeah. we get bales of 10, and yeah. then um, we squeeze as many, as many as you can. Um, you know, there's different kinds. Sure. Let's come here to the council room. We want buffalo robes caught in winter because that's where the fur is the thickest and then the most valuable. This is actually 
Ideally, one of our traders loads up a wagon full of trade goods and meets the Cheyenne at one of their villages to do the trade. Uh, that way, rival traders can't beat us to the punch. It's a gesture of goodwill, and it doesn't take any time away from the Cheyenne's window of time in winter to do their, their hunt. They did find the remains of two cat. cats when they did the excavation here, so it's correct that we have two cats. Makes a lot of sense because mice, rodents get into the buffalo robes, they get into the food. In fact, because there was less domestic, domesticated cats available out this way, it cost about the same to buy a cat as it did to buy a horse back then. Wow. The one we just saw is known as a bird eater or a bat eater. This one's known as a, a mouse and rabbit eater, so maybe it puts more girth on you when you eat lamb or a bird, because that one's a lot more slow. But that's a lot further. So the most practical thing to do is to bring the laborers up from Santa Fe or Taos, New Mexico. And this is the style those laborers would be familiar with. It would be unwise to force them to do a style of architecture they didn't, didn't have experience in. But it's problematic this far north. I'm going to talk a little different, but, uh, but in terms of lifestyle, there are a lot of things. Like I'd, I'd, I'd love to find out Charlotte's cooking and have some fun in the billiard room with the, the chamber pot toilet and having to go to the Arkansas River Bay, those would be the things that would be the adjustment. But you're right. Yeah, you don't know what you don't know. Um, so the hunters and trappers quarters, we have in-house hunters that get the meat. One of our in-house hunters, you just mentioned him, Kit Carson. He worked here for a couple years in the early 1840s before he was famous. Well then, let me put my book down here. So we have Carl Rhino Benz, Old Fort. Right. This one, let's start with the Old Benz Fort. Benz Old Fort. Bent's old fort. Stamped. Okay. And then Santa Fe Trail. Boom. All right. Let's see if I stamp for that. Did you get what you needed over there? Yeah. yeah. Russian fossil beds. Let's go check it out.
Redwoods of Colorado. Well, that's neat. Petrified redwoods. This is Fluorescent Fossil Beds National Monument. So apparently, millions of years ago, this uh, area in Colorado was a uh, tropical ecosystem. Neocan Epoch. So that's a bunch of uh, petrified stumps. That's pretty neat. 35 million years old. I would say they were dug out of the ground. I wonder how they found them. Was someone just digging here and uh, unearthed these, uh, these fossils. So in order to protect these stumps, They've built these awnings over the top of them so that the uh, rain and elements will cause less erosion. Wow, that was unexpected. This is why I left Texas. This is the kind of stuff I want to see. Mountains. go. It's going to be interesting. Well, this has been a gorgeous drive. Just went up this mountain. I've already forgotten what it's called. Took a quick little hike to an overlook. Ugh. We do not have views like this in Texas. I mean, look at that. Mountains. The mountains. They're all over the place. Lowry Campground is it right here? Open. And it's about half a mile in. Open four nights.
here a bit. 